Hello, my creative friends. It's Cree Rama from Junk Journal Divas, and I am back with kind of part two of my October Diva Delight project. So in my last in my last video, I was talking about glassine bags and just some examples of what I did with the glassine bags, and I did some altered paper clips. And then some, I just put mica powder and a little bit of Distress Glaze with a stamp. So these are kind of fun, just as is even. And now today, I'm working with tracing paper. So I don't know if you guys have ever played around with this before. I know a lot of people like to use parchment and make um, envelopes with the parchment. I personally like the tracing paper so much better um, parchment, things don't really stick to it as well. And I just feel like there's a lot more options for using tracing paper. And I'll show you an example here. This is a piece of parchment that you can see I've done a lot of different spraying, different dyes. I even have some glitter here. And I was going to use this for something, but this stuff the spray it actually will rub off you can't put a layer of mod podge on this it just peels right off it's just not what i prefer to work with with these projects so that being said i'm going to show you the stuff that i did with tracing paper so i'm going to start with this large pocket and so this is and i will hold this up here i used paper chenille technique and I will link that video tutorial. So that's what I used for this. I just added a flower here and this is just a tag that somebody sent to me. I just wanted an example in there but I wanted something that I could share a lot of the different papers with texture and fun stuff so I needed some bigger larger pockets. And then for this one, I flipped it so I also have a little area in the back. And you can see here, I have a little a piece of my paper lace. And then this is one of the digitals from GNT Designs that kind of looks like lace. So I wanted to use that. And then I also wanted to talk about flowers and all different things that you can put on to decorate these envelopes. There's lots of packages of flowers like this that you can buy. It's also pieces of doilies. But what I wanted to show you is, and I will link this tutorial as well, you can make your own. I made these from paper towels that were left from when I did avocado dyeing. And I just glued them down to a little circle punch here. And again, I will put this tutorial link, but I, these are really easy to make and super cute, right? These are some other ones that I made just using fabric scraps, strips of fabric. And I did the same kind of thing here, um, gluing it down or you can sew it down. And they're just super cute and so easy, little shabby boho flowers. So I just want to share a bunch of different options today and part of the fun of my doing Diva Delights, one of the reasons I love it so much is because I share an idea and it's so fun for me to see how it just grows and progresses as everybody adds their ideas to it or, you know, it's just so much fun to see. It's like the inspiration train, I call it. <laughs> Okay, so I want to move on to the other envelopes here. So different closures. One closure that's super easy is to just take something, it can be a circle punch or whatever you can think of, and you just glue half of it down and then kind of create a little tuck for your envelope. So that's a really easy closure. And this is one that I did the stamp on the back with the special delivery. Another closure idea is to do this closure with the string. I don't know if this has a name for it. If anybody knows what 
this is called. I don't know. Let me know what it is because I'm not really sure. Is it a document envelope or something? But anyway, please let me know in the comments if you know what that is called. So this is just another closure I made. And for this one, I was just experimenting with all different colors. So I have my rose stamps on here with embossing powder. Um, there's a rose stamp underneath here. And then this um, bronze copper sort of color is foundry wax, Tim Holtz foundry wax. So I just did a lot of exploring, playing around with different mediums on these envelopes like I always do. This is another one for this one. You can see my little bird that I did here also with some embossing glaze and then just a bunch of different stamping. I used a little piece of embossed paper to look like a tree branch. And then just a little fabric scrap ruffle that I made. And I used Velcro dots on the inside for the closure. And this is one that I just covered a junk mail envelope. And I used a different color of stamp here put some green on it and that is that same special delivery stamp. I just thought it was really cute and I haven't used it before so I really wanted to use it. And then this is also Velcro and you can see the inside of this one. And then for this one, I did a bunch of different color of stamping on here. I put some nice trim. I didn't do anything else to this because it has a lot here. And I used a book page. This is actually a, you can't really see down in there, but it's a picture of flowers from a botanical book. So that's another idea to use book pages on the inside. And then we're getting to this part and these are a little bit different. I wanted to experiment with playing around with different color, adding color to the tracing paper and then going over it with a layer of Mod Podge. And I like doing that with my embossed papers. If you watch my channel, you've seen me do that. I just like the way that it blends together all of the color. So I thought, let me try that with this paper. Now, as opposed to this one, this one with the Mod Podge on, so it has that sort of plasticky feel. This, this is one that I just added color and this is all in the video here. And I went over it with some gold and you can just see how the color shows up there. And that is a book page in in the inside and this one I just got this beautiful applique in the mail today happy mail from somebody and it was sitting here and I thought you know what let me try that with some Halloween colors because so I wanted to just try those colors so I've got some orange here and I just did some browns and black soot on here and again this is a layer of Mod Podge afterwards. So it's kind of the faux leather stuff, kind of that same, that same technique, I guess. And then for this one, again, I put the Velcro and I have black paper on the inside. So that's another one. And then I wanted to try red. I was thinking about holiday coming up. So that's what I did. I did some red and there's some gold on there also. And then I did the Mod Podge and this beautiful trim piece and book page on the inside. This trim, I have a lot of gorgeous trims from Sheila from Boho Daydreams. She just has such beautiful trims. This is also a piece of her trim. And this is also from her trims. So I will link her YouTube also in the video description. And this is really heavy with the pearls. So I didn't even do any closure here. Um, 
I just kind of left this as is. And I didn't add anything else to these. So I am sure whatever I would use, whatever project I would use these with, I could do, you know, another, a big flower. I could do something else to these, but for now, I just wanted to leave them as is until I know what I'm using them for, and then I can add to it. My last one here, these are my favorite colors to work with. I love blues and greens. And for this one, so I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted this to just be able to open up completely. So, I mean, this could be, I could have some things in here and then the person could journal in here. I don't know, I just thought, let me just leave it as is and see how I end up using it, I guess. So this is everything I'm gonna go through today, guys. It's a lot of fun, a lot of messy fun. So let's get started. So I'm starting with just some tracing paper that is already tea dyed and just adding some stamps here. Then I'm just gonna scrunch them both up and then carefully, because they do stick pretty well, so just carefully um, unravel it. And I'm gonna flatten it, but not, not too much, just enough that I'll be able to go over it with my paint. So I'm using my favorite paint palette, <laughs> the back of my hand, and I'm just rubbing over this um, lightly just to get some gold on there um, where the creases are. And I am doing two of these at a time so I can make two envelopes. And just showing a close up here of what it looks like. And now to start with my envelope, I have just a piece of tea dyed paper and I'm just folding it in thirds as it would be for my envelope and making sure those folds are nice and crisp. And then before I add my tracing paper, I'm going to go through and of course ink up all of the edges really well, including on the inside, the inside crease and anything that you're going to see. And then I'm just adding a little bit of this um, stamp and so I'm, I decided at first I was just going to do the inside flap but then I just added some to the outside as well. And you honestly don't even really see this part very much so you could skip this step if you wanted to. I just wasn't sure how much you'd be able to see through the tracing paper. So now I'm going to flatten that out quite a bit and I'm just lining it up with where my fold down flap is going to be and then I'm just using my double sided tape to adhere that. Now this actually does take to glue really well so if you don't have double sided sticky tape um, glue works fine or even a glue stick if you're going to sew it like I do. But yeah, if not, glue works fine. And then I'm just making sure that those folds are nice and crisp. And I'm gonna add more tape to, um, and you can kind of see I am focusing on the areas where the folds are. And you guys get creative with this too because you could use book pages or magazine pages even. Um, anything with, you know, images or text on, that would be really fun too. The last time that I made these, I just used book pages and I had a bunch of them, but I'm out of them. So that's why I want to make some more now. So I was having some issues with my corner punch here. It wasn't working very well, but I did the corners and then I decided that I wanted to make a rough edge on the inside. So I grabbed my my tearing roller and just did a rough edge and then I'm going to ink that up really well and I just kind of like that more distressed look and now I'm just kind of showing you what it looks like and I'm going to go put it through my sewing machine so here I've gone through the sewing machine and I'm just showing I kind of skipped over those fold areas 
just lifted my needle up and moved it to the, you know, the other side of the fold. And now I'm going to do a stamped and embossed image on the front of it. So I have this stamp and I believe it's hickory smoke that I use. So I'm just going to set this with my heat gun and I thought this image was really cute. It says special delivery on it. So here is my final product on the back there. And now I have one, I'm doing it a little bit differently. I'm starting off with the, I already have the embossed image there. And so I'm starting off and I thought, let me add some different colors. So I have a green stamp and now I'm gonna add it to my piece of paper, making the folds and everything just like I did with the other one. And since I just made um, the envelope journals, I also thought of, you know, when I, when I used my tearing roller, because the pocket is a little bit lower, then it would be a lot easier to slide things in and out of if you do want to use one of these in a journal or whoever you send it to could use it in a journal. So that's just something else that I thought of, I thought I would share. And here you can see I am using my tear roller to do the same exact thing. And then I'm going to ink it up really well, as always, including that um, inside crease. And I'm going to put this one through my sewing machine also. Of course, you don't have to do that. You could just put some glue down on it. But here is my second one that I made. Now this is one I made, it's a larger envelope obviously, and I use that paper chenille technique. So I am going to make one of these and it's coming up after I do some of the closures. On this envelope, you can see I did a little different stamping. I, I used roses on this one. And I wanna do the closure with the two circles in the string. I'm not exactly sure if that has a name for it, but I, you can use a brad to go directly through your envelope, but I didn't want it to, the brad to be on the inside of my envelope. So I am going to put my brad through both of these circles, and then I'm going to glue down the larger circle directly on top of my envelope. So you'll see here, I'm putting the brad through both of them and then just close it behind and then I'm going to glue these down and I use a lot of glue. And when I push it down, the glue that kind of squeezes out from behind, then I just kind of go around the perimeter with my finger and just smooth down that glue and it's finished, that's it. I usually prefer using a thin twine or something, but I couldn't find mine, so I just went ahead and I'm using this string that I could find. And then this closure is finished. And for the end of my string, I wanted to put something, sometimes I use a little bead or whatever I can find, um, but I wanted to put this little hole punch that I have that is an elephant. I thought it was super cute. So here I'm just showing you some of the other stamps that I did with emboss, embossing glaze, and I used different colors of ink. So this one I used, you can see in the background, the blue colored ink and speckled egg is the color of distress glaze that I used. Then I'm just showing another one here. I used red ink and fired brick as the distress glaze color. So now I'm moving on to make a larger envelope and I'm going to do the paper chenille process that I showed before doing the closures. 
And since I'm not using double-sided paper here, I'm just, I took one of my sheets and I cut it in half, and I'm just gonna cover up the areas that you will see because I don't want the white paper. So this is going to be, that I'm, that I am gluing down right now, this is going to be uh, where my pocket will be. And now I just have my piece of tracing paper and I'm using my double-sided tape to hold it down, just kind of hold it in place on my paper. This is gonna be the front of my pocket envelope. And then I'm just kind of tearing out a chunk of the top part. So that's kind of gonna be my little peephole area. And then I just want it to be really sort of grungy and rugged looking, distressed. So I just started tearing and kind of folding down the papers. And here I'm showing you what it looks like after my sewing machine. And so here just adding a little bit, grunging it up a little bit more. Now this paper is going to be my back sheet. And so there you can see what it's going to look like. So I'm just going to put those two pieces together and then I also put this through my sewing machine. And now I'm starting that whole paper chenille process where I'm using my stitch remover and just kind of sliding it right up um, and cutting a slice. You have to be really careful here. Um, it's pretty easy with the tracing paper because it's so thin but you just wanna make sure that you don't go through to the next layer. And then after that, I'm just kind of going through and ripping and folding down pieces of the tracing paper. So here you can see the final result. And then I wanted some of those pieces to lay down and be flat. So I just was gluing some parts here and there, some random pieces down so that, um, they just stay in place a little bit easier. And now just picking out some flowers to embellish the front of it. And I love this green one. And then there's another flower. I made this from a book page. So I thought these are perfect to use. And for the larger, the heavier fabric one, I'm just using my glue gun to stick that on. And here you can kind of see what I'm, my idea to use these envelopes for sharing some of my fun textured papers in Happy Mail. Okay guys, so I'm doing a little kind of check-in like I do when I'm flopping around doing this and that. So doing a check-in of what I have done so far. I'm going to put some Velcros. I'm going to put two little Velcro dots here. Here's another one. So this one I actually covered, um, if you can see, kind of see here, I covered a junk mail envelope. So this one's really thick. In front of this one I put this bird. I love this bird. And here, this was a flower. I just went around the edges of it. And that is my closure. So when I glued it down, I just glued half of half of it down. And I can just tuck it in there. Here, this sort of bronze copperish color is also playing around with the foundry wax. I have a little elephant punch. I love elephants. So I have this as a little dangle for the closure. And then the inside here and I just wanted to show you guys I personally love tracing paper you can actually coffee dye it um, and it's just it's just better it's just better than wax paper or parchment much better to work with so I have some here like this is one that I did so I just took sheets of um, just like I did with my glassine bags. I just took sheets and I would just spray or squeeze some in there with a dropper. And I just laid one on top of the other and I kind of squashed them so that it, you know, got in there in between and I'd add some more. So when I was dyeing this stuff and I sprayed it and it was, you know, there was a lot of um, 
color and ink and stuff there so I just went like this just to kind of blot it up and that's where I got this and I think this looks awesome and this is also from blotting up some color you guys know I'm all into my papers and dyed papers and making fun markings and stuff like that oh I just want to add some little velcro dots to these guys So I'm adding these kind of where my fabric is because I know that area is going to be, um, you know, it's thicker. It has a lot more support for pulling. So that is what I was looking for here to see where those are. Get this to stick there. And then I'm just going to close it give and give that a minute to dry. You guys, I completely forgot. I usually add a little drop of glue and then close it. So here I'd probably do the same thing. I might just, I could even just do, you know, I'll do two little ones like here. Because I have this extra sewing here. And this is actually sewn onto a little piece of felt. So it gives it a lot more support there. So I'll probably do them like here and here. And now I remembered to do my little dot of glue. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys. I hope I inspired you to have some messy fun. And I would love to see what you're creating. Come on over to Junk Journal Divas and join me.